Hello and let's talk about the harvest season and COVID-19. Farmers are set to harvest their crops amid the lockdown and they face a host of challenges. There are basic logistical issues such as being able to manage the harvest itself. There are questions of getting the right price for the crop, at least the price to survive. There are challenges of transportation and of storage. What support are our farmers getting for this? Are they getting any at all? We talked to Viju Krishna of the All India Kisan Sabha on this issue. Thank you so much Viju for joining us. So the first thing we wanted to ask was that basically it's a harvest season now and uh, from the reports you're getting on the ground for the last time when we had a discussion we talked about some of the issues the farmers might be facing and now 10 days into that what are the reports you're getting on the ground regarding the issues they're facing with the lockdown? See uh, the farmers were looking forward to a bumper harvest of uh, wheat mm. and uh, the acreage under wheat had also increased uh, in a big way compared to the last years. Uh, almost, uh, it was estimated that it would touch close to 32 million hectares. Right. And the uh, production uh, also would touch around 105 million uh, tons. That is uh, what was expected. But now, uh, in a few days, it's about to be harvested. There is a shortage of workers. A lot of migrant workers, we have all seen there, there has been an exodus. Mm -hmm. There is no... Uh, provision or no uh, help coming in for, uh, for uh, ensuring that there would be harvesters which would be doing it. That is one aspect. And other than wheat, there are different crops. It's not the, just the question of wheat and uh, uh, paddy alone. You also have chana, you have uh, uh, crops like mustard, which uh, are being harvested already uh, in some ways uh, using uh, uh, the agriculture workers, but they are not fetching the price in the market. You are, uh, uh, it is, uh, for instance, from Rajasthan, I just got reports that chana and mustard, which would uh, have fetched around 4,800 to 5,000 rupees uh, uh, for a quintal, today uh, is uh, not even fetching 1,000 rupees. So the government will have to step in to uh, uh, actually uh, try and uh, uh, procure this for the, uh, it could also in the, uh, in the very near future, it, there may be also the requirement the government should also step in for uh, helping harvesting uh, activities as well as in the transportation and marketing uh, of these crops. Right. So another key question basically is that uh, the transportation marketing itself. So uh, have there been any concrete arrangements made by any governments regarding these measures or is it just happening arbitrarily across the country? See, as of now, um, there is nothing uh, that is giving confidence to the farmers. Right. There have been uh, some kind of uh, government uh, orders and government notices coming in, but uh, still it is not happening, much, mu not much uh, visible on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it is only when it is visible on the ground that the farmers are uh, confident right. uh, and uh, that uh, the insecurity would go. Mm -hmm. That is still not coming. And uh, here we find already uh, crops, uh, especially the perishables, vegetables, um, uh, fruits, uh, flowers, floriculture is almost, I think, uh, finished in this period because right. there is no, uh, even buyers also are not uh, there. So that is uh, another uh, problem that we are having. So it is still uh, not uh, at all to the desired extent. Right. So uh, as far as the... Uh, like you mentioned, the non-food crops, so even for that matter, I think, say, what are considered cash crops, there also there would be a considerable crisis. Yeah, you see, uh, there are certain crops which require to be watered in a specific uh, period. Mm -hmm. And if you don't water, let us say from April 1st to April 14th, two weeks, you are not able to water, mm -hmm. then the entire crop is um, lost. Right. For, uh, there is an example I would like to give of cardamom. So we, uh, in uh, the state of Kerala, we had uh, the farmers called up, we had to intervene and with special permission that five workers could uh, go and uh, for the uh, watering of these uh, cardamom crop. Right. There is the case of uh, uh, the silk cocoons. The silk cocoons are re ready, uh, but there is no one to buy it. Right. After a point, you, uh, we all know what would happen to the cocoons. Right, right, right. So the, that, that would just be rendered useless. Uh -huh. So the, this kind of a uh, situation uh, is also there. Uh, sugar cane. Sugar cane, migrant workers are uh, uh, in a big way involved in the cutting of sugar cane. Right. So uh, that is not happening. So these kind of uh, problems the right. farmers are facing. So and also, as far as I understand, there is still no real clarity from the government on... 
uh, say even on, uh, an on the ground assessment regarding what is the necessary intervention that might be needed in various sectors. So, because we do, uh, we are getting some reports of say for instance in the urban economy what is the kind of impact that's happening. But uh, I have not seen much studies or for that matter much government announcements regarding and they declare it an essential service. But other than that say a sectoral uh, evaluation or a sectoral intervention doesn't seem to have come in yet. See, the only thing which has so far come in is the 2000 rupees um, uh, under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan, right. which has been coming into the accounts of the farmers. But that was anyway due at this time. It is not uh, something to uh, deal with the COVID uh, epidemic and the uh, related problems. Right. So uh, that is uh, one. We had uh, specifically made a demand that 6000 rupees under the, uh, the, the entire amount should have come uh, in at one go at this time because this is a crisis it was an unprecedented crisis other than that there was need to ensure that a uh, transfer of 5000 rupees that, uh, was a demand that all india kisan sabha agriculture workers and the uh, union and the citu had made that 5000 to every uh, account should be transferred immediately because uh, people are not uh, having any kind of income a lo right. lot of them uh, so, uh, uh, for purchase of the essential, uh, uh, for instance, other than food grains, the other requirements, to meet the other requirements. And the government itself, other than just giving the ration uh, of uh, food grains and some very meager amount of pulses, it should follow. For instance, Kerala has included about 16 or 17 other, uh, uh, for instance, there is cooking oil, there is salt, there is sugar. There are uh, two or three uh, types of pulses. There is uh, a suji or rava which is given. So these kind of uh, uh, initiatives have so far not come in most other states. And that cannot happen just leaving the entire burden on the states. The, uh, there is no incentive or uh, uh, no kind of uh, assistance being given to the states. That is a role which the center has to play. Right. And uh, as far as... Uh, the first lockdown, it came just unplanned without any uh, pre uh, preparation for the uh, lockdown. And it just uh, just forgot that there are millions of people, mostly from the rural backgrounds who come to the urban areas uh, to uh, work in the lean period as migrant workers. Most of them are from the uh, either uh, farming backgrounds or agriculture labor uh, backgrounds. So uh, that they were just, uh, there was no consideration of them. Okay. At least when now there is already the talk of uh, extending the lockdown. So I think at, at least at this time, there are uh, 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 there are four more days. The government should first spell out what it will do to mitigate the suffering of this huge mass of uh, 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 people. That is. Uh, uh, which it has to do in right, right, and a very related issue is also the question of the buffer stocks, because they have been rec the, the government itself has been claiming that there are there has been record harvests and there is a huge amount of stock obviously in the go downs. There hasn't been any announcement of policy regarding its utilization either. No uh, buffer stocks, uh, given the minimum buffer uh, which is required, uh, I think almost three times that is uh, uh, present. Mm -hmm. You have around 50 million tons of rice and about uh, close to 28 million tons of uh, wheat that is in the uh, go-downs of uh, Food Corporation of India, etc. And we are also looking forward to a bumper harvest, which if the government takes uh, proactive measures, mm -hmm. we can uh, save a lot of it. Right. Um, but uh, uh, that is something which uh, the government has to immediately act on. So this buffer stock is there. And uh, uh, even uh, in terms of pulses also, we have a good uh, uh, stock of pulses. But pulses, there is the issue of uh, milling is required, right. uh, uh, which again uh, requires migrant workers. So this buffer stock, you rightly pointed out that what, uh, how it is going to be utilized. Would it be left to in the go-downs for the rodents, the rats and bandicoots to eat, uh, eat or would it be given to the hungry uh, masses of our country? And if uh, that would not happen, just if you look at the uh, Great Bengal famine, which happened before, when people, uh, uh, millions died uh, due to the famine, uh, a, a big problem was not that 
there was not enough food grains, the more that the people who required it most did not receive it. Right. So um, uh, we could, if this is not at this, we could be staring at a huge crisis uh, where uh, hunger deaths already, you see, uh, post the lockdown, it is said that around 200 people have died, not due to COVID, but due to the lockdown and related uh, impact. So uh, you can imagine the kind of uh, human tragedy that uh, we would be staring at right. if the government is back on this. Right, right. So we would hope that in the next couple of days, at least there have to be some concrete announcements, especially if the lockdown is going to be extended. There's very specific sectoral based ones rather than calls for unity or calls for celebration and stuff. Yeah. No, those uh, calls should be just um, set aside and now uh, immediately, uh, I would say um, at, uh, by tomorrow itself, the Prime Minister should uh, assure uh, what are the concrete measures that are going to be taken. Right. And one thing which has to be done is to assist the states. Not enough is being done in that direction. That is uh, uh, something which the central government has to um, try and be much more magnanimous uh, at this time. It cannot uh, indulge in uh, politicking at mm -hmm. this particular time. And uh, um, it, this is a crisis in which all of us have to be united and fight it together. Right. And in that, the best food should be uh, put forward by the central government. Right. Unfortunately, they are still sitting on the Absolutely. different uh, recommendations and proposals that have been put forward to them. Right. Thank you so much, Uju, for talking to us. The Center for Monitoring Indian Economy says that unemployment in India has soared post the lockdown. An estimated 11.76 crore persons lost their jobs between March 22nd, which was just two days before the lockdown began, and April 5th. The CMI survey also shows that the Indian labour force participation has steeply declined to its worst level ever, a mere 36.1%. We talked to journalist Arindya Chakravarti on this issue. Thank you, Arindya, for joining us. So, uh, we have heard about uh, the unemployment, we saw about the unemployment numbers in India yesterday, the very steep rise. And we've seen this across the world. For instance, you've seen this in the US as well, millions applying for unemployment benefit over the past few years. We've seen reports of joblessness in Europe, of retrenchments too. So what are the specific char characteristics specific to India amid this global trend? So let's uh, look at it in terms of population. Obviously, uh, the US numbers are 6.6 uh, .6 million people applying for jobless claims. In India, we see uh, this, is a, this is CMI data, obviously not government data, unlike the US. CMI says 23%, more than 23% people returned that they don't have work in the first week of April, which is the second uh, odd week of the lockdown. Right. And uh, all this data was collected on the phone, not as robust as CMI collects, but as Mahesh Vyas said, good enough for us to make predictions. In fact, the 23% number is most likely to be on the lower side. We probably have a much higher level of unemployment, which CMI could not track because people must have gone away from their homes and probably not responding on the phones. Right. Now, if you look at it, there's another thing that we have to distinguish. In the US, there's a reason why it's called a jobless claim, initial jobless claim numbers, which is taken as the unemployment number, because people are claiming for benefits. They're claiming dole. Unlike India, where if you don't have a job, you aren't getting anything. The government of India is not giving you anything. Other than the announcements of you know, 20 crore Jandhan Yojana accounts getting 500 rupees of widows and pensioners getting 500 rupees a month and all the uh, free ration which has been announced. And there was an announcement that uh, registered construction workers, there's a lot of money lying there, state government should give them money. Uh, that, it appears, they haven't got, but we can come to that later. So it's very clear that 23% is probably the tip of the iceberg. And the reason for that uh, is that uh, as the CSDS uh, Azim Premji uh, survey, Azim Premji University survey of uh, 2017 to 2019 tells us that 40% uh, of India's workers are paid daily, 6% right. are paid weekly. And that means that at least 46% of people after two weeks will not have any money. Um, the, only 26% have monthly salaries. That leaves out another 28% who don't have a fixed cycle by which they get money. Maybe it's daily, monthly, weekly, and it changes. 
so that tells us that about 74% of people are actually vulnerable. And other than those who are involved in essential services, most people will not earn a penny during the lockdown. And uh, uh, the 23% number, therefore, is likely to go up rather than go down. Right. So a key problem, a key aspect or a micro aspect of this would be the fact that the people getting affected the most are the migrant workers, people in the informal sector, or as you were saying, the yes. people who are self-employed, which is yeah. kind of actually a very problematic definition in this context. Yes, yes, yeah. Exactly. When one looks at something called self-employed, actually it is meaningless because, uh, you know, the PLFS, which is the government's own data, tells us that... Uh, 52% of Indian workers are self-employed and their median salary, median earning is 8,000 rupees a month, right. which means 50% of that self-employed earns less than 8,000 rupees a month. 60% of them are in agriculture and we know what agriculture income is very, very low. Uh, Non-agriculture, uh, self-employed, which is the remaining 40%, out of that more than one-fourth call themselves CEOs or directors. And, uh, you know, when you think of a CEO, you think that this person is earning in lakhs. And therefore, what is a lockdown to them? You know, they have so much saving. Right. But the median salary for those who call themselves CEO and director is 11,400 rupees a month. The next lot, which is about 16% of the non-agricultural workers, which works out to about, let's say, 6.5% of all workers, uh, of uh, self-employed workers in India. And that is about, let's say, about approximately 3 out of 10 workers in India overall are shop assistants and their median salary earning is 10,000 rupees. Drivers, median earning 10,000 rupees. Textile and garment uh, workers, median earning 5,500 rupees. Food processing, 2,500 rupees. There are people who work with stalls and, uh, you know, uh, they open markets. Uh, they have these small uh, things in markets where you go and buy vegetables. Street maybe a pan and beauty shop. Uh, no, not street vendors. This is a fixed, these are oh, fixed okay. stalls. So that's 8,000. Street vendors who move around, their monthly income is 7,000 rupees. Now you can make out that with this kind of monthly income, if you don't go to work on any single day, you're not going to make money to eat. Right. Uh, you've seen those videos of people lining up in Dharavi, uh, and it has been clarified that this happened before the lockdown. Mm -hmm. There was some kind of a uh, you know, food being distributed. But we are seeing uh, people turning up in all these places where free food is being distributed in huge numbers to get their food. They cannot survive without, uh, without free food being given to them. Right. And that is some, uh, I would say, 30, 40 or more percent of Indian workers. And right. This is not just that 23%. Right. So the key question here is that uh, could the government have done anything at all considering the circumstances. Of course, the government's argument you know, would be that this was an emergency, we tried our best, but... Yeah, the emergency was something that you know about from middle of January, or at yeah. best, end of January. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's think that, okay, forget about end of January, start from middle of February. What were you doing sitting around doing nothing? Right. The government should have been prepared well in advance, and it is. this is not... I mean, if, uh, you know, there had been a war going on, the government would have been... You know, it's like the U.S., which has no problem funding, buying bombs and sending people, young people to fight in some distant land, right. but has a problem buying ventilators and masks for its people. So right. to say that this was an emergency, <clears throat> yes, it was an emergency, but people, experts had been saying this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You'll need to lock down. Right. You know, Wuhan was locked down on the 22nd of January. And we have locked down two months later. What was the government doing prepared, unprepared for two months before right. that? Right. Right. So therefore, it is very clear. Italy locked down on the 9th of March. Mm -hmm. You had a 15-day lead period. What stopped you from setting up isolation centers, from getting PPE kits, for working out ways to hand over money to the poorest of the poor, getting it ready, getting the lists ready, I mean, there's a new survey which has come out by this NGO called, I think, Jan Sahas. Jan Sahas, and, right, yeah. Jan Sahas. And they've done a survey of about 3,900 construction workers. And they're saying that 90% of construction workers do not have any earning right now. 90% of construction workers do not have any earning. 
The government announced that construction workers were registered, and I think they said that some 3.5 crore construction workers are registered in India. And of course, construction workers are probably double that number. Right. But even, nevertheless, they said that all those who are registered, there is a welfare fund for them, and they can all get money. And I've done a calculation that if you take that registered, and if all the money is given, they'll get about 10,000 rupees each. 94% of the people surveyed said that they're not registered. Right. So this registration itself is just is just a typical government figure. Uh, a senior IS officer told me that this is actually meaningless because these registrations are done from state to state and workers, the same workers, exactly. go work for a few days. And these are done by usually the uh, PWD kind of departments, right. you know, public work departments. Right. They register. They don't know who this person is. The same guy comes 15 days later, registers again. These are not unique numbers. Right. They change from... Uh, state to state. So mm -hmm. there is nothing in place to help these people. Right, right, right. Thank you, Anandya, so much for talking to us. Thanks a lot. That's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back on Monday with the latest developments of the day. Until then, keep watching News Click.